video, we're going to talk about how to use Vernier Video Analysis app. Uh, and we're going to do this for projectile motion, which is a very common lab analysis to do with us. To get started, we need to import a video file. To make things easier for you, I have already made a projectile motion video file. And you can download it by clicking the link in the comments and then just clicking this download button right here. Once you have that video downloaded, then you're going to go to Import Video and find that video. It probably downloaded just to your downloads folder and so you'll click that video and open it and we'll have all of these options now it says tap to add a point in advance through the video but before we select um, the different position of the objects during the frames we need to set a scale and an origin so to do that you're going to click on system and set a scale first so these circles with the big line they want you to move to a known separation um, and this is going to tell the computer how many pixels is one meter. Luckily, I have put a meter stick in this video. So I'm going to click and drag until the length of this line is the length of the meter stick. And then I have a rough idea that 1,347 pixels is one meter. Next, I need to set an origin point. So to do that, I'm going to click origin. And you could drag the origin to the projectile coming out of this little projectile launcher but it would probably make more sense to set the origin down where the table is and try to get the vertical line to align with the initial position of this ball. Um, okay, and so now we're set. This video file is edited so that it starts the very first frame, which you can see the frames in the bottom left corner. It starts when the ball is being fired out of the cannon. And so we can go to add point and just get started clicking on the projectile. It's going to go through the air, and what you want to do is try and click right in the dead center of this little steel ball projectile as it goes through. And the camera is going to make the steel ball actually look less like a circle, which has to do with, uh, I believe, the shutter speed. And you'll go all the way down until you get right about here. And now notice what happens when I click on this very last frame right here. This is frame 14. When I click on the ball, it magically appears off to the right, and there's a little pattern that's happening, but for some reason the ball is in this odd position. Don't click that position on frame 15. What's happened is that in between frame 14 and frame 15, the ball hit the table, and the camera didn't capture that motion. So if you click the ball here, you're going to get um, some bad data. So once you're here, stop. Now, how do we analyze the graphs that we've gotten? Well, we can resize this window, which I'm going to do by clicking and dragging over here. We can see the videos a little bit better. Um, and I'm going to go to View Options and turn Two Graphs on. When I turn Two Graphs on, you're going to have XX or XY and then the velocities here. I don't really like this. I just want one graph for the X horizontal position and one graph for the Y vertical position. That's very common for these labs. So let's click on the axis and we can change. We just want X, so turn off Y for this first graph. And since it's an X position versus time graph, I'm going to click on this graph, uh, graph options button. And then I'm going to write X A position versus time and enter or go away. And I've got a title for my Y position versus time graph. Uh, and you know what, I'm going to make these a little bit bigger, so I'm going to click this and drag it down here so I can see the two graphs. And we're going to talk about how to analyze these two graphs in the next video. For now, we just need to do um, a line of best fit. The X position versus time graph looks linear. It's a straight line, so I'm going to click on Graph Options, uh, apply a curve fit, even though it looks linear. And when I apply curve fit, my first option is going to be linear. I'm going to choose that, click Apply. And now I've got a nice line of best fit that gives me a slope, a y-intercept, and then, of course, a root mean square error of 0, 0.00, which is basically zero, and that means there's almost no error, error in this data. It's very, very good data. Zero is the best number for root mean square error. Okay, the y uh, position versus time graph does not look linear, though. So I'm going to go down to the bottom left, click Graph Options, Apply Curve Fit. And since it doesn't look linear, I need to decide what kind of function do I think I have here. Um, looking at it, it seems curved, maybe kind of like a frowny face parabola that you would see in a quadratic equation. So I'm going to choose quadratic uh, and see if it fits the data. Visually, it looks really good. So let's hit apply. 
and check the root mean square error to see how we did. Okay, root mean square error 0 0.002. That's really, really good. That's really close to zero. So this looks like a good trend uh, line that we've got here. I've got an A, a B, and a C term because this is a quadratic equation. Um, and again, in the next video, we'll take a look at what both of these X and Y graphs uh, mean, what the terms, the slope, the intercepts, and these A, B, and Cs. But for now, this is pretty much it. This is how you do basic analysis with the, the video analysis app. Saving the file is pretty simple. You go to the top left menu, uh, and you click Save or Save As, and save it somewhere that you would like. But sometimes all you want uh, is the graph out of this, uh, this file. So you can click Export to do that. And when you click Export, Vernier Video Analysis will give you um, a PNG file for each graph. So you can save the PNG of either graph. Or you can click this copy button right here and it'll copy it directly to your clipboard. If you do that, then you can go to, say, a Google Doc and then just control V, paste uh, that directly into your Google Doc. It's a really good way to do it. Um, the data table is a little bit different. Getting the data table, there's no export for the data in this particular one. You could copy all of these, uh, click and drag, control C, and put it into a, an Excel spreadsheet if you wanted to. Um, but oftentimes we just want to see the data and we can just do uh, a screenshot of that. So on a PC, that's Windows Shift S. Uh, it's different on Chromebooks and Macs. But I'm going to take a screenshot of just this portion right here. And I'm going to put that in my document as well. And that's how you get the graphs and the data out of this if you need to put it into a lab report or something like that. Okay, so in the next video, uh, I'm going to talk about how to analyze the X and the Y position versus time graphs uh, to come up with equations for projectile motion. This video is over.